So in our previous episode, we went to Athens, Epidavros, Bithana, and the sinkholes of Didymia. So we're going to continue our journey, starting at Dolo. Good morning! <laughs> so we've just stayed at a place called Dolo. Dolo was a really friendly place, and there was quite a buzz about it, considering it was the end of the tourist season when we visited. The sun, the sea and the sand were super inviting, and to be honest I wish we could stay there a bit longer. We also met some new friends. In Greece there are plenty of stray dogs around, but luckily for us, every single dog we saw was friendly. We also had some really nice food at this restaurant, and the lady who worked there was so surprised at how busy it was considering it was October. But we had some delicious, simple Greek food. I highly recommend it. Anyway, next stop, the fortress of Balamidi. Now it was really windy up on the fortress, but the views are spectacular. There are steps that can take you all the way from the town below up to the fortress, but luckily for us, we had the car so we could just park right outside the entrance. It's so windy, it's like the old happen film, the swept by the wind. I mean, I mean, it's much like a five hour film. So when you know? she, yeah, but when she means swept by the wind, do you mean gone with the wind? <laughs> Same thing, isn't it? That was, that's cool, let's read it, and it's so swept. That was your Estonian translation. <laughs> yeah. Literal translation. <laughs> swept by the wind. <laughs> Five hour film. Now this fortress, it's very windy, it, um, it's, 17, it's 18th century. So it, f we've been seeing things that are like thousands of years old. So this is like the first place we've come to that's 100 years old or hundreds of years old. I swear this is a battlefield map. I don't know why but it screams Battlefield 1. Now the Battlefield 1 map I was thinking of was called Foul Fortress, which is basically an Ottoman Empire fortress. Now this fortress in Greece was a Phoenician designed fortress, but it was used by the Ottoman Empire for a long period of time. But in 1821, there was the Greek Revolution, which led to the Greek War of Independence between 1821 and 1829, where the Greeks fought for independence against the Ottoman Empire. Now this gentleman I've tried to draw is called Theodorus Kolokotronis. He was a Greek general and a prominent leader during the Greek War of Independence. But sadly he eventually ended up in this prison. Once the Ottomans were defeated there was a vacuum of power and that caused a lot of infighting between different Greek factions. So Kolokotronis ended up in this prison. He wasn't there long as he was pardoned. And then in his latter years he wrote many memoirs on his experiences during the Greek War of Independence. Okay, so we're in the prison here. Yeah. It's tight. It's, well, it's quite small. It's really warm. Not much air. Imagine being stuck in here for the rest of your oh, day. I'm going. Christina can't do it. It's too claustrophobic. In the distance you can see Castle Argos from the fortress. And look, here's a view of the fortress from Castle Argos. Anyway, you can drive up to the castle, but be prepared for some serious windy conditions. Just uh, driving around and keep coming across like brown signs saying, you know, this here, that's this there, and then, like pyramids here. So we keep like getting sidetracked. So we are taking so much longer to like do anything, which is fine. That um, I don't know if we're going to see, but like we've only got so many days in the, with the car, 
and um, it's been very difficult, I think, to see, to see you know, everything. There's so much to see in Greece. What a country, beautiful. So we're really quite high up now on the on these Greek mountain roads. They're really fun to drive, but they are narrow. But luckily we have a small car, and uh, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I mean, it's just an incredible location. I don't know if I can really... You really have to do this. If you have the chance, just get a car, rent a car, a small car, and drive around Greece. But like, because we're so high up now, the the type of trees you get and everything's changed like it's colder up here you know and it's incredible you know Greece has like we've, well today we've seen like the driest of the dry dust that sort of like swampy and marshy place and now we're up in an almost looks like an alpine no it's oak trees not oak, not oak sorry yeah fern you know conifers and you think to yourself like you know, what country am I in? If you, took, if you did a geo guess for this, you might think you're in Canada for a second. I mean, it's just crazy that, you know, we've only been driving for an hour and you've seen like completely different uh, sort of habitats. I, I get worried that, oh, Greece will be all the same. Like, I was even joking, like, oh, it's just another gorgeous ocean view. But now it's changed again and it's so interesting. Carry on. Hello, cutie pie! <laughs> yeah. Mona Mavazia has a town which is completely hidden when you approach it from the mainland. It makes for a great surprise and we love the quirky streets lined with shops, restaurants and hotels. You'll also get some cracking views from the top and the walk to the top isn't too difficult. Speaking of the top, there's also a medieval fortress there with many medieval structures still visible. Now this place has been fought over and ruled by the Venetians and the Ottomans. So for example, this church has been a Christian church and it was also converted into a mosque when the Ottomans ruled. Once the Greeks regained independence in 1822, there were many civil wars, so the fortress never really returned to its former glory. Now the island serves as a tourist attraction, with many cruisers coming to visit the island. Just a tip, if you plan to park near the island, you're best just parking on the causeway, because you're not going to get any parking near the entrance. It is rammed full of cars parked alongside. Bebron must... And so far our Greece trip is just going marvellously. So our spirits were high and we decided that we needed a boost so we got a drink and some food. Now this whole trip has been unplanned, we've never made any plans in advance. So every place we go to is a new surprise. Sorry, just parked in Sparty but street parking because there's some sort of cycle race going on. We've seen an Estonian flag. And British. And the Union Jack. Not the Welsh one, sadly. Did you get familiar with the bin? <laughs> I need a bin, right? <laughs> I thought you thought it's like a what? person. You were like, <laughs> the way you're like, passing it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a social bin. 
So we're about to visit some ancient Spartan or ancient Sparta archaeological ruins. There's a cycling race going on today. I wanted to park closer, but like, you know how it's like. Everything's bolted off and can't make the sense of anything. But we parked somewhere. So we've been told it's, this place closes at half six. So we're going to be quick. I got a bit sunburned. Look, the goggles. Look. Oh, this disaster. So we got to our second hotel of tonight. And so we, I booked it, went to the hotel. I have got booking, couldn't find any of I did buy Expedia. Nice looking hotel as well. And sometimes if you can't find a book, you go to Expedia or hotel there, they have different availabilities. Um, it's 8th of November that I booked it, never ever happened before. It's, it's 8th October. of October today, and on its own it's changed the date because there was only availability or whatever. Oh, Christ's sake. I don't know if I can get a, um, probably not going to get the refund. Cause oh, you might. Look. No cancellation. Anyway. That's what happens when you do things last, last minute. Yes, yeah, so okay. maybe. No, I did three hours prior. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not that last minute. That <laughs> this one was 10 minutes before four. I got here. But it's just as nice, and the view from. I mean, it's amazing. Got a lovely sea view. I mean, two star hotel, I can't go wrong, 40 ish euros. And Aircon. At least we're here, we don't have to sleep on the street. It was a busy night, and the guy was not very hopeful that we were going to find one. Um, oh, he was. At least we got a car. No, because we had the car, it means you could drive three miles out of the town centre or city centre, so we're fine. I'm not bothered. <sighs> we're going to try and walk up a mountain tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to drive up the mountains, but we're going to see if we can get to a point in the little Fiat 500. If we can't, then we won't go up. And we'll just have to, you know, go up the old-fashioned, and not go up. But we're going to try and go up. 